Okay, so this is an interview for the Light Review, and uh, we're looking at the conundrum of specifying decorative lighting. So generally, um, it's not as easy as we all think. And Bruce is the director of of the <laughs> Light and Design Studio, and uh, he's going to give us his input on how he finds the market and how he finds in general to design with decorative lighting. So, Bruce, how, how much of a problem is decorative lighting for you? Or how much demand is so there? We, when, when we're, um, it depends on the project. So, you know, you've got two, two broad project types, residential and commercial. And, um, you know, the decorative lighting, it makes a huge, huge difference to the end, end result. And we find that we we tend for definitely for the residential to not have too much of a focus on it, and it's primarily due to the fact that there's literally hundreds of thousands of different options. It's so subjective, and it's so determined by the client's preferences and tastes and finishes. So we do tend to leave that to either the client or the interior designer if they've got one um we'll we'll tend to have a steer on a particular piece so if they have an entrance lobby if they've got a, a stairwell where there's a limited number of options we'll say you know this this is probably the best solution um but generally we we tend to tend to mainly leave it to them to be honest it's just um ends up potentially being so much work in terms of time consuming to get to get to a point where they're happy that we do tend to generally leave it to them for the commercial projects so for hotels and restaurants we we do uh, tend to specify it primarily because the end client you know they they do tend to have design teams so you can work with the design team and try and get that specification right and often you are relying on the decorative lighting to get the ambient lighting right so um you do need to yeah you, you need to have a have a have a hand on that <clears throat> uh, that is something uh surprise not surprisingly you're not the first person to uh basically say what you said because i, I think it's quite a common problem um I was thinking your approach to residential, as you as you said, is much the same as some other designers I spoke to also mentioned. Um, because they also said how you build for it. I mean, how can you build for something which is essentially changing all the time? Yeah. Because yeah. it's so personal, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, you've got the whole thing of um, you know the the budget for uh, an architectural lighting element of the project could be whatever it is and then you might be doubling that by the decorative element but you just don't know you know the the client might love fittings from ikea or they, <laughs> or they might love fittings from you know any any number of the more more sort of known um, lighting brands um so yeah it, it's it's yeah it's it's a difficult one to be honest it's it it, it can um and sometimes the clients sort of expect you in a way to be the person who who leads that um before definitely for the residential you know we we explain it from the from the start that, that we're more interested in the architectural lighting and the the effects and then uh how, how you know the technical aspect of how you control that and then the decorative we just say to them we're gonna we'll make some suggestions but it's predominantly on you to to um to make a decision on that i guess also it's the problem of billing for it i mean how do you bill for time spent changing when people change their minds because you have i mean we're all businesses at the end of the day and we have to be able to eat so uh, either you write it off as uh something you just can't bill for or you just somehow no no but that, that's that's what i'm saying so we 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 you can bill for you know an hour or two to send an email 
showing um, a list of options. Um, so, yeah, you're, you're right. <laughs> we, we tend not to, <laughs> tend not to feel for that, Just um, but we, we probably should. <laughs> out of interest, how did the clients react when you're um, when you're talking to them? You know, about I think that? It, you know if you're if you're if you're lucky enough to be working with a lighting designer, your level of expectations are probably you, you know you, you're already your 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 level of expectations are already sort of um, limited because you understand kind of what what the role of a lighting designer over an interior designer over an architect over you know project manager you've probably already got five or six uh, different experts so um generally when we have that conversation you, you know they they're fine with it um oh, okay and it's, if 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 um you know if they are Expecting more uh, steer on the decorative stuff, then we, we may, you know, we might not be the right fit for them. Wow! So it really is that clear cut that almost um, you would turn down a project. Yeah, it's it's, it's if they were just cool, interested it's, in it's, the... You know, on one hand, it makes a huge huge impact on the space, um, but then. You know, it kind of is veering into that interior design world because it's about the look and feel of it as much as when it's on as when it's off. Um, and it's like blurred lines, yeah, basically. Isn't a, it? Sorry, there's a blurred line between interior design and de or highly decorative. I suppose, I suppose that's the, that's the same with with what we do generally, though. Um, but that said, I mean, you know, maybe maybe we should we should actively be encouraging it as uh, as you know a larger part of our business but at the moment it's it's kind of not um like you say just because of the the the, the pure variance and the pure the, the quantity of options to to get to that point of being right for the spec and even then when it's installed you know so sometimes the client changes their mind and then you you're left with you know two thousand pound light fitting that <laughs> manufacturer to take back <laughs> yeah oh, actually that leads me on to my next question how how easy when you have actually specified um decorative lighting is it to get samples and where where would you get those? yeah i mean that, that's a, it's, it's a big problem um you know we can do uh 3d models up to a point um just to get a sense for the shape and scale of of the piece so, you know then in the room a big circular piece will work or a big square or rectangular piece would would might might see the space better um but yeah to actually see that physically installed somewhere um is near on impossible uh, there's very very few shops that you can go to unless you specifically ask to see that sample and then see it up um it is very difficult and we've we've had it we've had issues on projects where i won't name a, a quite a quite a well-known english manufacturer of quite traditional style carriage lanterns no names mentioned okay that <laughs> about one, one that i can think of begins <laughs> with a b <laughs> but um they uh they you know their, their data sheet will fit fitted the brief fine you know if, the, the, the shape and style was perfect and then when when it was installed the interior designer was complaining about the um the finish and you know unless you'd seen that physically there's no way that you could know that and you know i guess that's a that can be a problem to some extent with some um architectural lighting where you know at that level where you're looking at the my, minute details it can it can trip you up I uh, think like uh we had a maybe project for an architectural lighting a, a spot was in there and again i won't, won't name any manufacturers but because we use a slightly larger spot to the one to the sample we had the actual uh knuckle and the mechanism of going into the track was completely different um so again we came a cropper there because it wasn't more what we what we originally thought it was i guess it's the availability as well isn't it of samples because unless you 
you know, the one of the big players, then because in a perfect world, everyone would have all the samples they need everywhere, but um, and that would be what the customer would want. But if you don't have that, you've got no option, have you, just to show them a picture? And it, a picture doesn't tell you everything, does it? But I, I would say, you know, nine times out of ten, that is enough. Um, they like I say, there's there's only been like literally we've been doing this what eight, eight maybe ten years. I, I don't know how long we've been for actually, but <laughs> a long time. And it's, there's only been two occasions that I can think of where we had uh, you know relatively major issues. Um, and I think it's just you know you've got to manage expectations. You've just got to say look. This is as good as we've got. You know, this is the image. This is the size. We can mock it up in a 3D model, um, but that's really as as good as we can get. Um, oh, and then you are relying on you're you're relying on the ability of uh, shops or the the, man, the manufacturers to be able to take take those items back if they if the client changes their mind or they're they're not not appropriate. So yeah. you I think as long as there's that discussion had during that process i think you know that that's 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 the, as good as you can do you mentioned previously about the ease of getting um just seeing it for yourself i suppose because i i don't know if it was if it's me or if i am um, spoke to the previous owner of heels heels i don't know if you know heel heels the, the store yeah, yeah and she said that when she was first working um she introduced people like Tom Dixon to the store and they had a lot of products that were of a significant, a decent quality, decent quality design. But she said that the market is, um, isn't really what it was. Um, so I guess maybe mod the modern world of Amazon. In terms and, of having space for, for all the samples. Yeah. Or just the, having somewhere where you can go and say, yeah. you know, I'd like to see a, I th I'd like to see I'd like to see the product, please, or a number of products that aren't necessarily tied down to one supplier. I think you know people's returns generally are pretty, uh, pretty you know lenient for for those kind of items. I guess it's just the hassle, isn't it? So mm. you know you have to then take it back and package it if if you're the end end user. Um, you know, for a seven, seven, eight hundred quid light fitting, but I suppose that's that's the risk you, you take unless you know, unless you're a hundred percent, you know, two hundred percent sure that it's definitely the right size and shape for your space. So I think you know, well, you know, it's down to practical things of you know re returns policies for for most people. You think so? And, think, and also the fact yeah. that I think the high street is a different place as well. I mean, for me personally, you know, the number of shops that have, are no longer trading, you know, like the... I mean, what, where are they? There's barely any. You exactly. know, like you said, I think one of your other callers, one of your other guys is coming on. You've got Holloway's. You know, there was, um, you know, there was another shop in uh, Battersea. Oh, gosh, what's his name? But yeah, and then I suppose you've got hills. Where, where else are they? Yeah. Hey, you know, there's there's a few manufacturers who, who do have showrooms, um, but really only a handful that All I right. can think. Of. Anyway, I think unless you've got anything else to add, I, I think that's um, that's a really interesting insight. So, is there anything else you want to add about decorative no, lighting in general? Um, <clears throat> I would say I can't really think of anything anything specific. I mean, you know, for the, just just the difference between residential and commercial, um, and and I think with the commercial stuff, the the client still has a um, has a big hand in it. So there's a project we we, we work with uh, for Sotheby's and. You know, the client was so hands-on he went to um uh he you know he went to i think it was ochre oak is it ochre okra ochre oh, okra okra is a vegetable <laughs> 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 um but you know they they went to their showroom and actually took the time to 
made sure they were happy with it because it was like you know seventy thousand pounds i think and then plus five grand to to install the thing because they had to get scaffolding um so you know for key pieces you know the client's got to be totally on board otherwise you know it's a big risk to get that wrong oh definitely and also i guess it helps if from your perspective if the client is a little bit more involved because the, you're taking them along the way aren't you there's no surprises for them in that way yeah if you just go da -da, here's this massive pendant like <laughs> that would cost you what's, 20 grand what's that why did it do that well, that's not why i asked that's not that's not what the picture you showed me shows and that's always the risk isn't it so uh, cool yeah yeah i mean um yeah that that's my i mean that's and that's commercial stuff because you've got other designers in involved there's a bit more of a team a, a team sort of effort to get it to get it right and you know the so you, you know it's very rare that we that we have um issues with it um just because there's there's a the client isn't just relying on one one person's input um and if they've got any uncertainty then yeah you do need to try and try and see it if possible good stuff all right thanks very much bruce and uh hopefully we'll speak again soon